Okay, okay. So, in the last class, we were discussing this uh, conditional uh, distributions and densities. Just to recap, what we did last time was something like this. We said that this distribution giving z as a function of x and y, we said that by m, m is an event, this was nothing but p of and also if instead of z, we have got two functions of two random variables z and w, then also the same thing, same logic capital Z capital W by M was okay. <coughs> this is the thing and then what we did we took some special case like we found out this distribution if y we took z to be y, z is a in general a function of x and y, but, but in that example we took z to be y. So, this subject to this thing x less than equal to x 2 greater than x 1, okay, this we found out. And once you find it out, you can differentiate it with respect to y, okay. in fact it should be differentiated with respect to capital Y, because it will be a function of capital Y that will give you the probability density, okay, conditional probability density. There is condition to this condition x less than or equal to x 2 greater than x 1. Okay, we did that. Now, today we will be taking another special case which is a very important case actually of uh, this type that is how to find out the say conditional probability density P y capital Y okay, given x. Okay, a particular value x is given, maybe you can say capital X, x is given, what is the probability density, what is the conditional density of capital Y. Okay. Earlier, <coughs> I had a range of x, x is lying say within x 2 and x 1 or x is less than equal to x 2 up to minus infinity, okay. but now in this case x has a particular specific value capital X and subject to that what is the probability of y taking capital Y. Okay. <coughs> Where x and y both are random variables. Now, to do that we will be doing this in a limiting way. We define the event m to be this first. Okay, then <coughs> then what is this distribution? First we find out the distribution, distribution of y that is y taking value value up to capital Y subject to the same condition that is x less than equal to x 2 greater than equal to x 1. But this we know, there is, after all this is the probability density, this is the probability right, that is what is the probability. See the problem is densities are not probabilities as such, they are the derivatives of probability distributions, but probability distributions are probabilities. After all what is f for this joint, this conditional probability, what is this distribution? This distribution means the, what is the probability of small y taking values less than or equal to capital Y subject to some condition, what is the condition? X less than or equal to capital X 2 greater than greater than X 1 sorry greater than X 1. Okay, so, this is the probability and we know very well that a conditional probability can be written like a joint probability first divided by probability of the condition that is this is nothing but F y sorry not F y In fact, you can write not f, it is the probability actually. What is the joint probability of 
x lying within the same range and y less than equal to capital sorry not much space here. So, I rewrite y less than equal to capital Y. So, joint probability of x falling within this range between x 2 and x 1 sorry this should be actually strictly greater than okay, and y less than equal to capital Y divided by the probability of x less than equal to x 2 greater than x 1. This comes from our very basic notion of conditional probability that the conditional probability is a ratio of the joint probability divided by the probability of the condition. This works for the distribution, okay. but density as such is not a probability function is the derivative of a probability function. What is that probability function? Distribution function. That is why to use this result we start with the distribution function, probability distribution. It is a conditional probability distribution. We write it like this as a ratio of two probabilities. Okay. From here we will be going to the density. Okay. Now, this you know let me raise some part. Now, the numerator can be written like this f f is the joint probability distribution of x and y. I can as well put a subscript x y here, but I am not doing it, it is assumed, it is implicit. So, just let me write and then you see the correctness. After all, what is this difference? In both of in both the cases, small y is taking the value capital Y. So, here it means the total probability of y taking value less than equal to capital Y jointly with x taking value less than equal to capital X2. Same for here instead of x 2 we have x 1. So, this difference will give you the joint probability of y taking value less than equal to capital Y, but x falling within x 2 and x 1. So, that is how we replace the numerator by this and denominator is very simple. It is available in terms of the probability distribution of x Okay. All right. <coughs> and what was it? This was equal to and this was equal to F Y capital Y divided by the condition that is x less than equal to x 2 greater than x 1. This was equal to this. Maybe you can put the equal to here. This was equal to this, but as I told you I am interested in the density. We have done with the distribution. Okay. I am interested in the density. And right now, this is available subject to this condition that x is lying within a band given by the limits x 2 and x 1, but finally, you have to make it I mean the band width has to be 0 that is small x would be equal to some particular value capital X and subject to that condition I have to find out the density right. But now, we, with this condition only that is x less than equal to x 2 greater than x 1, we have got a conditional distribution. From this, we first derive the conditional density by derivating it, deriving it by differentiating it with respect to y. Okay. That is what you get here. Differentiate. both sides y 
on this side I get P y capital Y subject to the same condition ok. Now, on this side on this side what I get there is a question. Now, there is not enough space here firstly you see denominator remains as it is because we are differentiating with respect to y capital Y. So, denominator does not change only problem is the numerator. What is the numerator after all? <coughs> you can see what the numerator means I can just draw here a small part that is suppose there are two limits one is x 2 and there is x 1 and this is this capital Y it goes like this. Okay. Then the numerator here means the probability of the pair x y falling within this zone that is small y ranging from minus infinity below up to capital Y and small x starting at x 2, but going down up to x 1 of course, without touching x 1 it is less than equal to x 2 greater than x 1 within this range as given by this shaded rectangle with one side going up to infinity minus infinity. Okay. What is the probability? Now, what is the probability here? It is nothing but the joint density of x y integrated over this area right. That means, you can say that I can replace the numerator, this numerator I can replace by this d x d y ok in one case it goes up to from x 1 to x 2 in other case minus infinity to y right. Now, we are differentiating let me erase this figure now. So, I get some space So, we differentiated both sides with respect to capital Y for the left hand side by definition we get the conditional density of Y I mean capital Y given by this condition x lying within less than equal to x 2 and greater than x 1. Okay. On the right hand side if you differentiate with this to capital Y you see only this integral outer integral has the limit from minus infinity to capital Y. So, if we differentiate from our knowledge of calculus we know what we get is nothing but the inner integral itself only thing is the variable Y okay, inner integral with respect to x that is dx dy gun and instead of small y we will have capital Y. Okay. If you differentiate with respect to capital Y you get the same thing okay, the inner integral and small y takes the value capital Y right. So, we can then write that this will give you x 1 by x 2 p x capital Y d x divided by of course, what we had earlier f x x 2 minus f x x 1. Okay. Now, let let us confine ourselves to this range let x 1 be equal to some capital X and x 2 
is very close to x 1 x plus d x. Okay. If d x is very small that is if they are very close to each other infinitely close infinitesimally close to each other then you know this integral then can be approximated by p x comma y d x p capital x rather p capital x comma capital y into d x. Okay. And how about this denominator? Denominator is nothing but after what is the denominator meaning? It, it actually was meaning the total probability of x lying within the range less than equal to x 2 greater than x 1. Now, if x 2 and x 1 are very close to each other, then this difference will be nothing but probability density of x that is p x x okay, capital X because x 1 is capital X now times d x. Right? That means, this leads to equal to this this equal to carries here p capital x capital y d x that happens to the uh, integral okay limits are capital x and capital x plus d x and they are very close to each other so this integral is nothing but p of capital x comma capital y times d x and in the denominator we have got the probability density of x at capital x times d x when x 1 and x 2 are very close to each other and the difference is only d x the net probability of x lying within that range between capital x and capital x plus d x is nothing but p x x that is probability density of x evaluated at capital x times this d x and the 2 d x they cancel which means we get just this ratio. Now, if you make d x 10 to 0, then x 1 and x 2 coincide. Okay, we have only capital X, x 1 and x 2 coincide, we have only capital X, but this ratio is independent of d x. right? That means, we can now write that p of <coughs> y within bracket capital Y by capital X that is small x taking the value capital X subject to that condition okay, y capital Y hmm. that density is nothing but ratio of these two probabilities okay. rather ratio of these two probability densities this is a joint density between x y you can also put if you want you can put it x y here joint density between x y evaluated at capital X comma capital Y divided by the density of x evaluated at capital X. Right. So, now I write this result neatly. We write like this actually. I should put x y here, I should put x here, but I suggest that you know if I just do not use subscripts write p of x comma y, p of x and p y by x, even then we will not be confused thinking that the three p's they are same, because here p x comma y obviously means it is a joint density function, p of x means it is just a density function of x and p of y by x means it is a conditional density. So, obviously it will imply that these three are three defined probability function, probability density function. In that case, you can simply drop the subscript and just write p y by x by the same token then you can also write Okay. Further, here also we can extend the base theorem concept.
we have seen p x by y is what p x comma y divided by p y right we have seen this p x by y this p x comma y this is a joint density function between x y and uh, this is a density function for y ok this you have seen and then this you can write as p of x by y this we have seen just a while back right numerator can be written using the pre just previous result and p y we know it is a joint density function of y. So, you can also write it as this was we have seen earlier integral of p x y d x ok and p x comma y as we know we can write as p x by y into p y hmm. so that means you can write it as Let me raise this part. You can write as And again p x y I write in the same manner d x ok. In the discrete case you can easily extend this result Okay. So, maybe we cannot we do not need to or maybe we just write down for the sake of completeness the discrete case. In the discrete case actually the same argument holds here x and y they are random variables jointly random, but they are taking some discrete values x can take some discrete values from this say, say x 1 x 2 up to say it can go up to infinity ok like this and or it can go up to some finite number of terms similarly y it can take values from y 1 y 2 either going up to infinity or some finite number of terms ok. In this case, in fact, it is very simple here now. The probability, there is no question of density here because it is not continuous, ok. Say, say for x i given y equal to y k, ok. This we call p i k, p of x equal to x i is p i p of y equal to y k is p k and obviously, you know that p i is nothing but summation of p i k over all k. There is holding i fixed take all possible cases y taking y 1, y 2, y 3 up to all I mean whatever what the terms we have at the end add up all the probabilities that will be the probability for x taking x i. Right, the pi that means we have seen that pi is nothing but summed over k pk is nothing but instead of p you know it is better we replace it by some other symbol say q because p is already used here with one subscript with two subscripts p no problem we understand 
that ok just a minute I just made a mistake in the notation, it is not conditional density, it is a joint density, hmm. joint pr probability. So, this is a comma and let us call it q k. So, q k is again summation of p i k over i. Okay. In this case, in this case, p of x taking a particular value say x i subject to y taking y j y k will be what? Again it is a probability, so it is a conditional probability, so it will be a ratio of joint probability that is x taking x i y taking y k divided by the probability of uh, y taking y k. So, we are not going into that detail, it is simply becoming p i k divided by q k. Okay. Likewise, hmm. so that is just discrete case. It's nothing but whatever we had in the analog in the continuous case. It's just the same logic, but it's lot simpler here because you know there is no integral. Okay, just discrete summation, no dx, no density, and all that. Okay, just probabilities. Problem comes only when it is continuous because then you first define the probability distribution, which is a probability function, but then we take the derivative of that, which is the density function. So density is not actually a probability but it is a pro derivative of a probability function. Okay. We just take an example now, suppose x and y they are jointly Gaussian, jointly normal zero mean. I have to find out what is y by x. That is given small x equal to some value capital X. Okay. What is the probability density of y for capital Y? This you have to find out. Okay. For that, we use the same formula that is. This is nothing but okay. We will be using the same formula. This joint density is Gaussian, we know. So, let us do some manipulation over that and we can easily see what it will be. And of course, if they are jointly Gaussian, we have seen earlier that x and y both are individually Gaussian also. Okay. Now, since they are jointly Gaussian, okay, <coughs> we just go to their uh, the joint density function, even though we have uh, it is a bit complicated function, so let us just write down for the zero mean case, what was p x y with zero mean, we know that it was 2 pi sigma 1, sigma 1 is the variance of x or you can write sigma x, okay, sigma x, sigma y square root 1 minus r square, this you have seen already times exponential what? Minus 1 by twice 1 minus r square, r is the correlation coefficient times x square by sigma 1 square minus twice r x y by sigma 1 sigma 2 plus y square by sigma 2 square. Right? Okay, this was the function. 
joint density function for two random variables x and y which are jointly normal and have zero mean. Now, here let us consider this term okay, x what is sigma instead of sigma 1 I should write sigma x it is a mistake I am making. Okay, what is sigma x? Sigma x square is the variance of x, x itself is Gaussian with 0 mean, y itself is Gaussian with 0 mean, variance of x is sigma x square, variance of y is sigma y square and when they are you take the joint density they are jointly normal also with the r being the correlation coefficient. Okay. Then the joint density takes this form, this we have all seen is just a repetition of the our previous uh, observation or previous results. So, this is p x comma y and in this p y by x this is the expression. Now, here we just need to do some algebraic manipulation of this quantity inside this argument. Okay. That is inside this exponential thing we have got this expression right minus 1 by 2 1 minus r square and then within this bracket this quantity. Here we will be doing some manipulation. So, this it is simple algebraic manipulation, I will not do the derivation, I will show the result and then you can verify. This argument my claim is you can write like y minus r sigma x x by sigma y whole square divided by twice sigma y square to 1 minus r square minus x square by twice sigma x square. Now, let us let us verify this is capital X. Okay. You can verify and we will verify that this is nothing but what we have in this argument. Actually, I am telling you what we are trying to do, we are trying to extract from this entire thing, we are trying to extract out this term x square by twice sigma x square. <coughs> okay, this is our purpose. Now, how do we do that? Okay, you can just verify if you add, if you subtract this from this, if you carry out this algebraic subtraction, you will need get this. How? Okay, the denominator 2 is common twice sigma y square sigma x square which comes here also 1 minus r square. So, that comes. Okay. Then if you expand it y minus if you take this term y minus r sigma x capital X by sigma y whole square multiplied by sigma x square then what do you get? just a minute. So, you get firstly y square sigma x square. So, that term will be here if you add y square if you find y square sigma x square. Okay. So, that term comes. Then here twi minus twice y or sigma x x by sigma y and this multiplied by sigma x square. right? Okay. Actually, this is small exercise. I would say that uh, I would leave it to you for uh, finding out for checking this. 
and uh, since we are not giving homework, let us verify okay, that this argument of exponential actually gives rise to this. If you cannot do, I will do in the ne next class. Okay, this is just sub algebraic means and nothing else. Okay. Hmm. Now, what do we do? If this is true, what do we do from here? Is this <coughs> that we have to divide this by the probability density of x. Now, in the probability of density of x, again an exponential function comes and is argument this term is there minus x square by twice sigma x square. So, that goes okay. that is what is probability density of x 1 by root 2 pi. sigma x exponential minus x square by twice sigma x square right and you have to divide p x comma y by p x. If you make this division and you already seen that the argument of exponential can be written like this we are assuming this is true then this term cancels this minus x square by twice sigma square is present here also here also so that cancels right which means and out, out what happens outside 1 by root 2 pi and 1 by 2 pi. So, actually you get a 1 by root 2 pi term okay. then 1 by square root 1 minus r square remain, but sigma x and sigma x cancels only sigma y remain right. So, now it is very simple I can erase this part. under this case is very simple now sigma y square root 2 pi 1 minus r square into exponential here this thing will come up okay this first term minus y minus r sigma x capital X by sigma y whole square divided by twice sigma y square 1 minus r square. Okay. I think I made a mistake here, sorry this is why it was not coming. this should be sigma y yeah sorry okay so i make the correction here also sigma y by sigma x. <coughs> okay. Maybe we will verify this result 2 d only instead of because it is small result. Okay. Uh, but look at this function, what is this function? I say that this once again a Gaussian density function. So, conditional density also is Gaussian. What is the mu then? What is the mean? Mean is this quantity r sigma y x by sigma x and what is the new variance? That is sigma y square times 1 minus r square. So, on the outside we have 1 by root 2 pi, okay. then square root of the variance sigma y and square root 1 minus r square that is coming. So, this is Gaussian, okay. this is Gaussian with mean I repeat r sigma y capital X divided by sigma x and variance 
sigma y square times 1 minus r square. Okay. And now, if it were not 0 mean, then what happens? Instead of capital X and instead of capital Y, in that overall expression, we would be having x minus mu x and y minus mu y, but the rest of the calculation remains same. So, in this case, what we would have had instead of y, it was y minus mu y, and instead of x, x minus mu x. Okay. That is the only difference. Okay. Now, we just for the sake of completeness, we verify this result. I said that we can take it as a homework, but there is no need. Okay. We just have to write down that expression again. That is just the quantity which I had earlier in the within the I mean as the argument of exponent that was 1 minus 2, 1 minus r square within bracket x square by sigma x square this capital X. Okay, twice r x y divided by sigma x sigma y plus y square by sigma y square. Okay, <coughs> now this is this. It's actually algebra, simple algebra. That's Verify. You can verify either starting from this side and going to that side, or the other way. Okay. <coughs> y square sigma x square. I mean, what happens to these terms here actually? <coughs> Minus twice okay, so one term. You get sigma y square x square. Another term sigma x square y square, and in another case twice r x y sigma x sigma y. Okay. On the other hand, if you start with this, you break it up, let us verify what you get minus capital X square. Yeah, it will come. First, consider this part. This side. Here, what you are getting, you can easily see denominator remains same in both cases. Sigma x square, sigma y square. If you break it up, square it up, and multiply by sigma x square you get okay this minus sign actually there will be a minus before this so don't bother about the minus sign here i will come to that okay sigma x square y square one term this is present here right <coughs> so this is present this term sigma x square y square. Then another square of this r square sigma y square x square by sigma x square. So, that cancels with this sigma x square. So, you get r square sigma y square x square okay. divided by sigma x square, but that cancels with this sigma x square. Then minus twice r sigma y x y by sigma x multiplied by sigma x square. So, you get twice r sigma x sigma y x y. This is what you get from this side and from this side you get 
just minus x square sigma y square. Now, you can see that the expressions this is present sigma x square y square present we have already seen. Hmm. then twice r x y sigma x y that is present okay twice r x y sigma x sigma y and there is another term here yeah, minus x square sigma x square common 1 minus r square okay actually there should have been x square sigma y square 1 minus r square so 1 minus r square should be present x square sigma y square 1 minus r square right this will be present. So, you can now see this term and this term cancels x, x square sigma y square r square and here in fact according to me this should be plus yes this should be plus. Hmm. Yeah. this will be present right. So, this cancels now easily seen this minus r square x square sigma r square that cancels with this and you are left with x square sigma r square which was present here. So, all the terms are present they are same ok only thing is minus I took the minus sign already. So, this there should have been minus sign here ok. So, these two are same out of which minus of x square by twice sigma r square is kept aside. Okay, that cancels with the denominator, but then the denominator also we get uh, another probability density function that is for x which is Gaussian. So, within the in the arg argument for the exponent there we will have minus of x square by 2 i sigma x square that cancels. Okay, so, this is seen now. Okay. <coughs> so, this is done. Following the similar lines, we can also define conditional absolutely similar line of argument that is, suppose you consider instead of random variable y a function of y g y subject to a condition m this is nothing but this is nothing but by your previous definition for the probability y I mean this g y multiplied by the probability of you can write this y by m ok. That is even though you are taking expected value of not y, but function of y to carry out the expected value we have seen earlier you have to just take the function multiplied by the corresponding probability density. The probability density is for y ok subject to m this is this ok and as a special case. as a special case E of g y given x this x equal to x this will be nothing but the, the condition is this m m is now x equal to capital X by the same logic it will be g y multiplied by p of y by x d y. Okay. 
as a particular case of g y, you can take g y to be y itself. Okay, where g y is equivalent to y, then in fact we get e of y by x, this is small y, this is capital X. Okay, x is subject to a particular value that is capital X and this y is variable here. So, this is nothing but Okay, this we call conditional mean of y. Similarly, you can define conditional variance also. Then you can define this is nothing but expected value of y minus mu y by x whole square subject to the condition capital X that is x is taking the value capital X and once again this will be nothing but So, that completes this topic of uh, functions of random variables. Okay. I think we have covered this in great detail. From here, I mean so far we considered function of one random variable, first one random variable, then one function of one random variable, then two functions, then, uh, then two random variables, then one function of two random variables, then two functions of two random variables. So, this has generated, this has produced the background for uh, now going, to, I mean <coughs> for extending this treatment to a random sequence, where you have got just not two random variables, but any arbitrary number of random variables forming a sequence. right? So, this is a topic which we will take up next time. Thank you very much. Okay. <coughs> so, today we discuss uh, an important topic that is, uh, in fact, we start this topic sequences of random variables. You see, we started with uh, <coughs> first uh, a single random variable, right, and we considered a function of a single random variable. Then we generalize it to, I mean, two random variables. Okay. So, it, it, you can even say that it is a sequence just of two, two, I mean two elements, two random variables, two element sequence and we consider a function of two random variables, then two functions of two random variables and all that, right. That whole treatment will now be generalized, where we will be considering a vector say x as x 1 dot 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 x n. This x will be called a random vector if each element x 1 to x n is a random variable that is x will be called a random vector or say sequence if each x i is a random variable. Okay. So, the, you see earlier we considered two random variables. So, we had a vector of two elements x 1 and x 2, we call it x y, this is defined notation, but now it is more general n such random variables, right. So, from a hindsight you can see that if we talk of the joint density or joint probability distribution of x, it will be basically a function of n variables, right, x 1 to x n. Okay. So, we can define 
joint probability distribution Actually, I should write like f x for x, say x values x 1, say specific values x 2 dot 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 x n, okay. and this capital X actually is the vector consisting of the variable small x 1 dot 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 small x n. Here capital x 1 is a particular value for small x 1, x 1 is the variable, capital x 2 is a particular value for the variable small x 2 and likewise. What does this mean? <coughs> it means the probability, probability of this event that x1 is less than equal to capital X1, x2 less than equal to capital X2 dot 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 xn less than equal to capital Xn. This should occur jointly. There are n joint, n joint events that is one is small x1 less than equal to capital X1 and there is small x2 less than equal to capital X2 so on and so forth. Okay. This should occur jointly simultaneously that is what is called joint distribution right. Okay. This is denoted by f x x1 up to x n. Sometimes when I do not need I may not I may skip this subscript x and directly put x1 to x n. I think you can easily understand okay. sometimes, but when there is confusion. Okay. And capital X one is Y one, P X two, which is Y two minus Y one dot 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 P X N, Y N minus Y N minus one. Okay. So, you can easily see that the concepts involved here, they are nothing new. They are simple generalizations of the concepts that were valid or that were introduced rather in the case of two random variables. Okay. That is why I am not giving any proof and all that, you can argue about this on your own. So, I stop here today, in the next class I consider this uh, uh, issue further and go into things like you know mean, covariance, correlation. In fact, we will have a correlation matrix now, covariance matrix and things. Okay. Again, the characteristic function issue as relevant here and that takes us to a very important theorem called central limit theorem. Okay. So, that is all for today. Thank you very much.